Factorizing quadratics has been an issue for you for far too long. So today, I'm going to take all that anxiety away, providing you with a better approach to this topic. Welcome back to another Brilliant by Numbers with Naina McFarlane. Today is our second lesson in our series Factorizing Quadratic Expressions. If you haven't seen lesson one, feel free to go over to our channel and watch that video. It will be very helpful to cement your understanding of what we're about to do today. We are factorizing quadratic expression, still with coefficient one, but some terms being negative. Now this is where lots of students tend to find it difficult to manipulate their negative numbers. But with the structured approach that I will take you through today, I guarantee that you at the end will be quite satisfied and have a clear understanding of this topic. So let's go into our lesson. In our last video we have discussed the general form of a quadratic expression. The general form of a quadratic expression is ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are all integers. Let's consider the quadratic negative x squared minus 8x minus 9. I'm going to help you to identify a, b, and c, which is quite critical to what we're about to do. So a is the coefficient of x squared, and I have also color coded it here. That makes it so much easier to identify. So as you can see, there is just a negative sign before x squared. This is indicative of negative one. So in this particular expression, a is equal to minus one. B is the coefficient of x. So minus x is what is seen before eight. Very important to ensure that we understand that the sign goes along with the number. So b is equal to negative eight. And c is our constant term. And also there is a sign before nine. So therefore c is equal to negative nine. Now that we've identified these parts, we're going to look into something quite critical to help you in manipulation of negative numbers, which I find that lots of students struggle to manipulate their negative numbers. Hence, that's exactly where the barrier is as it comes to unlocking this particular topic. So we're asked here to find the sum and product of our given number pairs. So I've got two here and five minus five. And this has been done, but I'm going to talk you through it just to make sure that there is clarity here. So a very easy way to understand this here is just to think of a real life context. For example, I have two pounds, but I owe someone five pounds. I can only pay them the two pounds I've got, and then I am going to owe them three. Now, if you take the minus to represent owing, I write my answer then to two and minus five added together as minus three. Now, as it relates to the multiplication, once I have one negative involved in a multiplication, the answer is always going to be negative. So two multiplied by negative five will give me negative 10. In the next question here, I've got a number pair minus four and minus five. Going back to my explanation, you, looking at this as owing, I owe someone four pounds and then I owe them an additional five pounds. Altogether, I will owe them nine pounds. So therefore, negative four and negative five added together will give us negative nine. Now, the difference here as it relates to the product or the multiplication of the two numbers, this time I have two negative numbers. Now, once negative numbers have a pair in multiplication, the answer is always going to be positive. Therefore, negative four multiplied by negative five will give me negative 20. So I'll just fill that in there. Now I am given here negative six and 
positive eight. Again, looking at the concept of having and owing. So in my possession, I have eight pounds, but I owe someone six pounds. I can pay them six and also have another two for myself. So therefore, negative six and positive eight together, if I add them together, it will be positive two. Now in multiplication, I've just said, if we have one negative number, then the answer is going to be negative. So negative six multiplied by positive eight will give me negative 48. I'm going to do a little bit of reverse here. Now I've got my product and my sum. So what possible two numbers could I have added together that will give me minus 12, but when multiplied together, give me positive 36. And the answer is negative six and negative six. Yes, it is possible to have the same factors being added together and also being multiplied. So here, minus six added to minus six. Again, I owe someone six pounds and then I borrow another six. I'll owe them 12 altogether. But when I multiply two negative numbers, the answer is going to be positive. And my final question, a little bit harder, but we can do this. So I have a product of minus 21 and the sum is minus four. Then I've got to think what two factors of 21 when added together will give me minus four. A very, very interesting way to think of this is thinking of two factors of 21 that are four apart. And the answer is three and seven. Notice I haven't put a sign yet. So I've written down three and seven because I know they are four apart. Here is where I now think of which one of them should be negative such that when I add them together, the answer is minus four. So because I want my answer to be negative four, it means that the greater number has to be negative. So then I need to have minus seven. So I owe seven, I pay three, I will still owe four. And then multiplying three and minus seven together, my answer is also minus 21. Now, with that foundation being laid and that clarity in terms of the operations of adding and multiplying negative numbers, half of your problem is solved. We are ready to factorize. So, let's go a little bit deeper. Here, my first example, we're asked to factorize x squared plus x minus 12. So, in this particular example, it is our C term that is negative. So, like we always do, we must write down what is A, what is B, and what is C. So again, A is the coefficient here. We've already discussed in our previous video that once there is no number before x squared, the answer for A is going to always be one. We can see again that B is also without a coefficient or rather without a visible coefficient, which means that the B term is also one. And finally, in writing my numbers down, the constant term here for 12 is not just 12, but minus 12, that is critical. Now, we've discussed last lesson that we need to write down some factors of our C term. And even though our C term is minus 12, it is a good idea to write down the factors of positive 12 and then we can look for the manipulation as to which term has to be negative, which term has to be positive in order for us to get our factor pairs. So we need to list the products of numbers that will multiply to give us minus 12, but I'm going to write down the pairs of positive 12. So my first pair is one and 12. One multiplied by 12 is equal to 12. I could also consider two times by six. And again, 
there is another factor pair. So that is three and four. Now, how do I know which one of these pairs suits the criteria? This is how I know. Now, remember, my B term is positive one. So I need two factors of minus 12 that will give me positive one. This means that I need the pair that is one apart. And the answer is three and four. Now that we've identified the pair, we now need to see which one of these numbers should be negative. Because remember, when we multiply them together, the answer should be minus 12. But when we add them together, we should get one, positive one. That means that the greatest number has to be positive. So therefore, I now know that it is my three that has to be negative. So let's check. Minus three, add four, gives me positive one. But when multiplied together, they will give me minus 12. And yes, I have found my factor pair. So now I just need to put them in my brackets. So one of my pair will be x minus three, and the other will be x add four. And in our previous video, we have discussed that we could also prove our answer by expanding the brackets. Again, if you don't remember how to expand your brackets, you can check out the first video in our series. So now we are going to get into our second example. So in this example, slightly larger numbers. Absolutely fantastic here. So we're asked to do x squared, to factorize x squared minus 12x add 32. So again, we're going to write down what is a coefficient of x squared is positive one. The coefficient of x is minus 12 for our b term and our constant term is positive 32. So I'm going to list the factors of 32. So remember, we list them all and then we look at the criteria because we want the sum of these numbers to be minus 12. So listing the positive factors of 32. So I've got 1 and 32, 2 and 16, 4 and 8. Now, we want them to add to minus 12. Indication here, there has to be negative terms involved. Now, which two of our factors added together give positive 12? Yes, the answer is 4 and 8. However, we want them to add to negative 12. This means that both our numbers have to be negative. Now remember from the factor pairs we have investigated on the previous slide, we recognize that multiplying two negative numbers give a positive. So here, minus four add minus eight is equal to minus 12, but minus four multiplied by minus eight gives a positive 32. So we have found our pairs. Last step, so we've checked that they've added to minus 12. So last step is to put them in our bracket. So the answer is x minus eight and x minus four. Really doesn't matter which one of them you write first because multi in multiplication, if you multiply four by eight or eight by four, the answer will still be the same. And again, I cannot stress enough under exam conditions, once you've got the time, check that your answer is correct. Now, before we get into our last example, let's talk. As an educator for almost 20 years, I find that the key to mathematical success does not always rely on the mathematical skills that students have, but rather the confidence that they need in their personal lives. You know, sometimes the lack of confidence comes from 
comparison with other students in their classroom, maybe students who have higher target grades, students who seemingly grasp concept immediately as they are taught. But it is very important to understand that everyone is on a different journey. And you may take a longer time than other students to process information. However, that doesn't mean that you are inferior. A matter of fact, you are as good as any. You are inferior to none. You are simply amazing. And though your journey might require that you do a little bit more, you can still reach your target grade and you can still achieve as great as the other people who are seemingly ahead of you in our classroom. So as you walk away from this video today, remember you are inferior to none. Now, with that being said, let's get into our last example and summarize this topic. So for a final example, we are asked to factorize x squared minus 5x minus 14. I hope you've noticed that now our b term and also our c term are negative. So we're going to write down what is a, a is 1, b is minus 5 and c is minus 14. We are going to do what we've always done and list our number pairs of the positive first and then manipulate which ones need to be negative. So I've got 1 and 14, 2 and 7. Now if you notice here, I want my number pair to have a sum of minus 5. I hope you're getting into the pattern to recognize that we want the pair that is 5 apart. So 2 and 7 are 5 apart. So we know that our pair is going to include these numbers. We then need to focus on which one of these needs to be negative. Now, because I want my answer to be 5, this tells me that my larger number has to be the negative number. So therefore, my pair will be 2 and minus 7. Now that I've done that all, I just simply need to put them in my brackets. So one bracket will be x add 2 and x minus 7. And in summarizing, I'm just going to expand the brackets just to show you how you can prove that the answer is correct. So I've got x add 2 and x minus 7. So I need to do x times x, which is x squared, and x times by minus 7, very important here, is minus 7x. x times by 2 is positive 2x, and positive 2 times minus 7 is minus 14. I then need to simplify the b term. So I'm left with x squared minus 7 add 2 is minus 5 and my, co my variable is x and minus 14. Here we can see that we have gotten back to the original expression and this is how I know that my answer is correct. Now key takeaways. One, we recognize we must write down a, b and c. Two, we need two factors of the C term that add to the B term. And then finally, we need to find the pair that will add to the B term and multiply to the C term. Once we have found those pairs, we simply put them back in our bracket. I hope that I've managed to provide some clarity on what can be a complex concept. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and also topics you'd like me to explore. This helps to build our community and clarify some concepts that may pose a challenge for some people. Now, don't allow yourself to only be the benefactor. Go ahead and tell your friends they too need to have a clearer understanding. So, like, share, subscribe, and most importantly, hit the notification bell so you know when another video is uploaded.